Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Craig Norman. We're going to be speaking about where to find myopia management education. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Well, thank you for joining us for the, this episode of the Myopia Podcast. We're, uh, we're joined by uh, our good friend, Craig Norman. Uh, Craig needs very little introduction. He's had his hands in so many things over the years and has been a mentor to uh, pretty much everybody in the industry. And it's been really, really great to have, uh, have somebody like Craig who I can look up to and call every once in a while, even if he won't answer my questions, but we still try. Thank you for being with us on the Myopia Podcast, Craig. Hi, Dave. Hey, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's uh, great to have the opportunity to chat with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so Craig, why don't you fill us all in on uh, what you're up to these days? Uh, because you haven't gone off to pa pasture by any means in, in, uh, in leaving the school, so to speak. So tell us a little bit about where your fingers are and what you're doing sure. right now. Sure. So just as the quick background, of course, I was a clinician uh, here in South Bend at South Bend Clinic for 35 years. And around eight or nine years ago, I left there to go up to the Michigan College of Optometry to set up a research unit. I had committed to those guys for three years and ended up staying almost six uh, and decided at that point uh, to head in a different direction. Uh, we had never sold our home in South Bend, and so I, I wanted to really spend the rest of my life here uh, as it is. Uh, and I moved back to South Bend at that point in 2018 and uh, kicked in my consulting business with industry at that point. And that's primarily what I do now. Uh, I work with uh, half a dozen or so companies at any given time, uh, along with the publishers in the contact lens uh, industry. Um, I like to say that uh, I have professional ADD. And I like to do a number of different things, not just be pigeonholed into doing one. And this particular role allows me to do that as I'm able to work with companies in, in the myopia space, in the scleral space, in the topography space, uh, and along with the meeting companies. And it's really an enjoyable way to spend uh, my days right now. You know, I, I had always told everybody when I left the university that I was just leaving the university. Everybody thought because of my age that I was retiring, but it is, and I got tired of telling people I'm not retired. Well, we're no, not I just that ignore fortunate. It. Yeah, I just ignore <laughs> it now. And, and uh, that uh, well, hopefully I'd like to work a long time as long as I can contribute a little bit. I plan on doing that. Well, I think that uh, those of us who know you certainly value your contributions, and we're not excited to to send you out to pasture, so to speak, as uh, as us Midwest guys would say. So you've you've had your your hands in this myopia space for a very long time. Uh, you had a orthokeratology uh, myopia meeting yeah. that started uh, way back uh, in in the early two thousands. Uh, which, as I recall, kind of morphed and then became the Global Specialty Lens Symposium. Tell us about that meeting and uh, why you started getting interested in myopia way back then. Yeah, so I'll share with you something that goes back even a little further, is that in 1999 at the Academy of Optometry meeting in Seattle, uh, that at that meeting, I came back from the meeting uh, one day and told Ursula, uh, uh, my wife Ursula, in our hotel room that I want to buy a couple domain names. And she said, oh, that, you know, that, that's cool, sweetie, do what you want. You know, what's a domain name? <laughs> and <laughs> anyways, so I actually bought the domain names of myopiacontrol.com, myopiacontrol.org. 
and didn't really know what you know that would be used for him. But I I was so convinced that even back then that this myopia thing was going to be something. Uh-huh. And then three years later, uh, I was fortunate enough to. Uh, when working with Polymer Technology as an outside consultant, uh, that I pitched them about the possibility of having an ortho K only meeting. Uh, and mainly I talked to them first because of the opportunity of them being a potential sponsor of the thing. And uh, came up with a game plan along with Pat Caroline and Joe Barr and others about putting on the original Global Orthokeratology Symposium in Toronto in 2002. And we invited people from all over the world. And lo and behold, 350 people came from 25 countries. Uh, and it kind of kickstarted the interest um, at, at that point. This was way before soft lenses. And in fact, at that point, the orthokeratology part of it was not really looking at the myopia control part so much. It was really right. more of what we would say for adult mm-hmm. um, uh, orthokeratology. And you know that was the beginning of the uh, uh, interest in it at many different levels. Yeah. So over the years, and what I'm hoping to focus on here is, is these, these meetings and this education around myopia so over the years, we've seen this transition within the myopia space. You had that meeting for a while. Now we've got several other meetings. Kind of highlight for us, for those people who are in the myopia space that may be interested in learning more, what kind of conferences or meetings or, or things are out there that kind of highlight, uh, highlight myopia? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll begin by saying that the Global Orthokeratology Symposium morphed into the Global Keratoconus Congress, which morphed into the GSLS or the uh, uh, Global Specialty Lens Symposium. And and part of that morphing was because things changed from just ortho K, all of a sudden um, keratoconus and scleral lenses became a big deal, then myopia became a big deal, and the GSLS was a place to hold all of those things together. Unfortunately, when you have a three or four day meeting, there may not be enough time to focus in on one particular area enough. And Mm -hmm. for so many years, scleral lenses was most of that particular focus. Uh, And luckily the myopia part of that is now coming into its own. And there are these other standalone like meetings that are occurring. Uh, There is the global myopia symposium that uh, sponsored by Pentavision. They they uh, are breaking that off. Uh, they had their first meeting last year. Uh, having another one this year is primarily a virtual meeting uh, mm-hmm. uh, at this point. Uh, there are other meetings that are being sponsored by Jobson, for instance, and yeah, review of myopia, myopia management, yep. right, uh, that are doing a, exactly the same thing. Uh, and it's becoming a thing of its own at that uh, at this particular yeah. point. There's a wealth of education that can be out there both online and, of course, by attending meetings as soon as we all feel better about hopping in planes and traveling around every weekend. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, always the BCLA tends to have some highlights on whatever's a hot topic. Uh, whether that's getting rid of gas permeable lenses, as was anticipated, sure. uh, or uh, orthokeratology, which was uh, yeah. my excuse me, myopia management was a big topic this year yep. at the BCLA meeting, uh, with data uh, being published on all different sorts of things. So that's yeah. another big meeting. Obviously, at the academy every year, we get a sure. little snippets of what's kind of some uh, sexy topics, uh, but. You know, it tends to be that these myopia meetings and summits that are held really do focus in on that. And then our uh, our, our friend Tran Mai, he has uh, an orthokeratology kind of boot camp that yeah. is out there. And, uh, you know, there's various different resources for people if that's an interest to really dig more into ortho K or myopia management and then vision by design. That's another meeting uh, that tends to originally started as the Orthokeratology Academy of America's meeting, 
and now has kind of shifted this vision by design. Yeah. So if, if, if you're somebody that's listening, you want to know more information, you maybe want a really deep, deep dive or a boot camp, uh, so to speak, there are quite a few resources out there. Craig, talk, us, uh, talk with us a little bit about other resources where you know people starting in this myopia space, because here's what I envision, I'll back us up here. You know, there's going to be some people that are listening to our podcast who have been doing myopia management for years and years and years. And this is just a, a great way for us to stay up to date of what's new. But there's also a lot of people entering the space right now. Yeah. And this is something they want to implement into their practice. What resources are available that you're aware of that uh, people could look elsewhere and find some value? Yeah. So let, let me start by saying that um, I'm reflecting on this recently. I decided the way to talk about myopia management slash myopia control is it has become... Well, you a, own the domain name, so you want it to be myopia yeah, control. Well, <laughs> well, we actually use one still at the university where we have a website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that I donated that to the university to be able to use, uh, but the uh, the reflection that I had is that myopia management is a twenty year overnight success. Yes. In, in that we've been going down this path literally for twenty years. Those of us yes. that are just really focused in on it, but now it's just mushrooming, Dave. As you know that that it's it's reaching the primary care. Uh, optometry practices at some level. Uh, and it's totally become such a big business uh, on not only the contact lens side, on the ortho case side, but on the softland side, the pharmaceutical side is going crazy. And, and, you know, and now you know, here in the U.S., we're looking at in the next year or so, the um, spectacle lenses designed specifically for myopia management to hit the market. So yeah, um, it's going to be myopia management all the time coming up here in, in the near future. You know, mm -hmm. I think that the, uh, the places to gain the education uh, are still the more traditional ones, but maybe not delivered in the traditional manner, meaning, yeah, you know, the Academy of Optometry is a fine example. And, it, you know, whether it's a live meeting coming up this year or last year or was a virtual meeting and going forward, probably going to be, uh, at least for a period of time, some level of hybrid component, um, mm -hmm. uh, if you will. Uh, and these meetings that uh, are being put on by the publishers, which generally are more like one day events can also be a way to get a really good brain dump on what's happening in the field. And, and I really think that the manufacturers are doing a pretty good job of being able to deliver education right now. And, and they're in the phase, luckily that they're, they're delivering general education about the space and not just only about their product. Um, and, and that's important, I think, because although the optometry schools are doing a much better job today about teaching what's happening in myopia management to the students, you know, the optometry schools, you know, their main job still is, is to help the optometrists or the burgeoning optometrists to get that sheepskin and pass those boards. And they don't need to learn uh, a lot about one topic, they need to learn a little about lots of topics to be able to get past yeah. that boards. So it's impossible. If you can reflect on, on your education, you just can't walk away with as much information on one topic as you would like. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've, we've got a lot to, in the space of, of, of things coming out in the, in the future, we, even with Vision Expo, they're, you know, focusing on those sort of things. So there's, there's a lot of things. And then we've got publications too, you know, uh, yeah, Pentavision has done a great job with their publications. They've got a, uh, a, a column, if you have not already seen it, that's coming mm -hmm. out with regards to myopia, mm -hmm. that you'll be, not a column, a newsletter, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, with Shalu Pal and Mark Bullimore, um, and uh, Jobson's with their review of myopia management led by uh, our own optometrist, Dwight Ackerman. So those are some good things if people want to really kind of dig in and, uh, and, and dive into the education. Where do you see us going in the future with this educational component. We've got 
thousands of optometrists coming into the myopia space. Do you think that's going to be led by industry or are we going to see a lot of initiatives kind of breaking up at big meetings? Um, I think it'll probably be both. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, industry is going to continue to help to drive this. Um, as you know, the, the, the big boys are now in the game, you know, with Cooper Vision and with J&J recently and Bosch and Loam has an initiative on many different fronts uh, as well. Uh, they have the horsepower to generate a lot of interest, both yeah. from the provider aspect and and then also, you know, some of that is going to automatically go to the lay press uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the, the training itself, everybody's trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to, to achieve that. Uh, but I think it's going to be multifaceted. It's going to be at yeah. these meetings. It's going to be online stuff. It's going to be related to you know, like the boot camp and stuff that the Vision by Design folks do, or private entities like Tan Mai, who you mentioned, you know, who has a mission, his own personal mission to train people in this uh, particular arena. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Craig, for kind of reviewing uh, education around myopia management and. You know, if you're somebody who's looking to get started and you're kind of wanting to feel like you've gone uh, A to Z before you get started, may I encourage you to just uh, find a couple of patients that you have in your practice that uh, are, are, are progressing in their myopia refractively. You've seen them progress over the last couple of years and uh, get started with something, whether that's uh, getting a hold of a, a soft contact lens company, and there's several that are out there, getting a hold of an orthokeratology company, or figuring out in the research how to go about prescribing atropine. Just get started with something, and then it'll be amazing how through uh, your interest with regards to reading publications and being at meetings, I think you'll really start to see that your knowledge will grow. And uh, like Craig said, uh, like a mushroom, it's uh, really kind of blowing up right now. And it's going to be hard to hard to avoid this 20-year uh, overnight success that we've seen with myopia management. Uh, thank you, Craig, for joining us. And uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Uh, please make sure to uh, subscribe so you can hear about all the new episodes that are coming out. And if you would leave a five-star review, we would greatly appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Dave. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.